or above, so he was greater than the average person. He was more than an average batsman. He was a good, but so what? Uh, and whatever ability, it's faded away in the course of time. I saw in Back to Godhead magazine once some, some cartoon commentary on the Olympic Games. There are three frames in the cartoon. One of them is <coughs> some spot on the pedestal with number one. And there's, you can see the commentator with this typical sports commentator look on his face, praising him like anything. And the person who's won the gold medal is just completely uh, blissed out. And there's every, all the cameras are pointing at him. And in, this, in the second frame, you can see that the person who's won the gold medal, he's still, ah, but everyone else is walking away. And in the third frame, he's looking around and there's no one there. <laughs> When they call that, oh, go, 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 and immediately they go, and now for the next event. Blah, 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 blah. And he's running faster than everyone he's going to, it looks like he's going to, oh, someone else is coming up here. He did it. He's going to, flag, photo finish. Oh, yes, you want to go, oh, 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 go, man, play the national anthem, and then on to the next. <laughs> you have to go from person to person to person. Well, Krishna, you can just go and pray. To pray, just praise him. No need to praise anyone else. And he's pleased with it. But it, yeah, it's not that the, there's no question of overly praising him. To call Imran Khan a superman, maybe it's so, but it's uh, it's over praise. To think that he's some kind of divine being or something like that, which I'm sure he himself would agree to. In some ways, he's actually. There is a quite a sensible person appears to be. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, Krishna is pleased. He's, he's, he's pleased to see the conditioned soul. The conditioned soul. The conditioned soul is suffering in the material world. Krishna is not happy with that because he loves all his parts and parcels. So when you see they're praising him, oh good, they're, they're making some progress. They can start to come back to me. Praising is the beginning. Maybe not out of love. Stop! Yeah, I'm just saying that because Logadas Maharaj, he, he sometimes said the first thing the Prabhupada ever said to him because he was going like this with his foot. Stop! <laughs> so you stop doing that. It's the first thing. It's a good instruction to stop, stop everything which is not Krishna conscious of. There's more than just stop shaking your leg. Just stop. Stop all that nonsense. It's implied. <coughs> so, uh, Bhata, Sri Bhata, Parashara Bhata, the original Sri Vaishnava commentator on Vishnu Sahasranam. He points out that the praise of him, because the, these names, Stava, Stava Priya, Stotra, Stota, they all overlap in their meaning. So Parashabhata in his commentary points out that anyone who praises him in any manner, even in a negative way, how can you praise him in a negative way? Well, uh, for instance, we find Vishwatagra Thakur, especially in his commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, when the demons are uh, insulting Krishna, then Vishwatagra Thakur, by his being himself favored by Saraswati, he understands how Saraswati puts the words into the demon's mouth so that even though they intend to insult Krishna, actually, if you understand it in another way, they're actually praising him. And an example, example is Shishupal. He's said to about Krishna, Adham, which means the lowest. But another meaning can mean, another meaning is that he makes everyone lower than him. 
So in another way, they're praising. Uh, then Indra, when he was insulting Krishna, prior to the Govardhan Lila, Vajala, he's talkative. Yeah, Krishna, it's true. But he doesn't talk nonsense like Indra in this instance. Balanam, he's just an inexperienced boy. Yes, even though he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he appears as an innocent cowherd boy. So even those who, they may intend to insult him, uh, it actually comes up, because it's not actually possible to insult him. You can try, but it doesn't work. The, the devotees will find some way to uh, make that real and fitting. Uh, we can praise him in any language. And even Namanya Nantasya Yashom Kitaniya, even if it's imperfectly composed according to all grammatical rules, that will still be effective. In the Vedic hymns, they have to be exactly chanted, exactly properly to be effective. But in praising Krishna, it's the attitude that Krishna accepts, the attitude of praise. Who wants to praise him? That will be accepted, even if they don't properly know how to do so, according to the proper rules of Sanskrit diction or whatever it may be. In this regard, there is a verse uh, <coughs> that Pandit, uh, Pandit Kahe, no, Murko Vadati Vishnaya. Pandit Vadati Vishnave. Ubaya Ubaya Tu Samapunyam Babagrahi Janana. So when we say uh, offering prayer to Krishna, offer, yeah. so what do we say? We say, Om. For Vishnu, what do we say? Om Keshavaya Nama, Om Narayana Nama, Om Madhavaya Nama, Om Govindaya Nama, Om Vishnaya, is it? Vishnaya. Vishnaya. It should be Vishnaya, isn't it? Ah, Narayana, Madhavaya, Govindaya, Keshavaya. It should be Vishnaya. But it's a... It ends with U probably. It's a... Uh, it's an exception. It's a special case. So a fool, or one who doesn't know properly, he will say Vishnaya. And someone who knows the rules, he'll say Vishnavi. But both get the same pious result because Krishna accepts the feeling, not exactly the words. That doesn't mean we should deliver, don't bother and just don't bother to pronounce everything properly. Because if we actually have a feeling for Krishna, we'll want to say his name properly. And not mispronounce. But uh, Errors due to uh, ignorance or inability to pronounce properly. Just like I, the Chinese devotees, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, they can't in their, in their language there's no R sound, so they say L, Hare Krishna. The Krishna works. The Spanish devotees say, Yai Prabhupada. They don't have J, they don't have the J sound. Yai Prabhupada. Alright. So even yeah, he, he he's so greedy to be praised. He so much likes to be praised. Just alright, you make us start somehow or other. You come to somehow or other if one comes to Krishna. He accepts. In this regard there's a quite a well-known anecdote. Srila Prabhupada in 1966 lecturing in the storefront at 26 2nd Avenue, New York City when a, an alcoholic, a bum, bum means completely down and out, lowest of the law kind of character, walks in mumbling something incoherently, walks in and puts two rolls of toilet paper, puts it down and mumbles something and walks out. And I said, he started his devotional service. He offered something. Now, toilet paper. Prabhupada doesn't use toilet paper. 
he actually wrote a letter to one of his acquaintances in India about his early experiences in America. See, after passing, they wipe their backside with paper. It's such a, such a funny idea. <laughs> you wipe your backside with paper and then you pull up your pants and walk out and no question, no idea of bathing, whether it is. So, Sri Prabhupada found this all rather strange. But in, oh, he started his devotional service. It caused something that's completely useless to Prabhupada. He's not going to use toilet paper. But anyway, he wanted to give some. All right. Uh, again, one shouldn't, if you're going to give something, you should think how to give something of some meaning with it. And another occasion, uh, one devotee gave something, I said, some, gave to Srila Prabhupada some pair of socks which were baby size. And Prabhupada said, This is a useless gift. What's the use of giving it? It can't be used at all. So when one, when when one is on a very low level, you may accept any service, but then one is supposed to come up. It's not that someone's been initiated for 20 years and he hears about this and thinks, oh really? And then, okay, uh, he goes to the store, buys some toilet paper and offers it to his guru. <laughs> no, he should give something useful. So, uh, Parasha Bhatta states that, yata katanchit, in whatever manner one praises him. Yaya Kadachit Bhashai, in whatever language, even in negative or imperfectly composed language, Yena Kainapi, by anyone, including those who are not even meaning to praise him or denigrate him. Tejas Karatiras Karo Biva, either in praise of his qualities or in negative terms. Stava Priyatama Asya Iti Stava Priyatama. He accepts them as praise of him because these actions are done while thinking of him. And Parashabhata gives an example from the Puranas. There is a, that question came this morning about the Shruti and Smriti. Well, the, the, the Puranas are part of the Smriti. So Purana means very old. It also means Puriyati Iti Purana, that which makes complete. So this, the teachings of the Vedas, they are demonstrated in the Puranas and uh, Parashabhata in this regard uh, gives the understanding of the meaning of the name Stava Priya by referring to the narration of Ganta Karna. Ganta means bell and Karna means ear. So Ganta Karna was such a demon that he hated hearing the name of Vishnu. So what he did, he put little bells, one on each ear. And as soon as he heard anyone begin to say Vishnu, he shook his head. So the bells would ring. And then he wouldn't hear the name of Vishnu. But in order to make sure that he wouldn't hear the name of Vishnu, he's always listening carefully. Is anyone going to say Vishnu? Anyone, this way? anyone going to say Vishnu? This way he's always thinking of Vishnu. And that was constant meditation on, on Vishnu. And so for this he, he got mukti. He got liberation from material existence because he was always thinking of Vishnu. And the example, he, he also uh, gives the example of Shishupa, who is uh, his uh, whole being was absorbed in hatred of Krishna. So from the very beginning of his life, he was simply insulting Krishna. When he was a baby, he was with his, the parents, they're waiting. What are the first words that the baby will say? In the case of Shishu Pallavas, I hate Krishna. Something denigrating him. So from the beginning, and it, his mother thought, oh, now he's, he's going to get in trouble because Krishna is the Supreme Lord. So I said, well, could you forgive him? How many, how many times? Okay, I'll forgive him 99 times. A hundredth time, he killed him. But he was always meditating on Krishna. So he got liberation also. Right. In the Bhagavata, it's also uh, <coughs> Ah, oh, that verse 
verses there. Sankaitam parihasyam va strobam elanam elava vaikunta nama grahanam asheshaga haram viduhu. People who, who are knowledgeable, who know the actual import of the Vedic literature, they say that anyone who chants the holy name of the Lord is immediately freed from reactions of unlimited sins even if he chants indirectly to indicate something else. So, like for instance, um, in England, in English language, where you have the, the, you can, instead of having a washing machine in your house, you can go to the place, that's like a shop where there are washing machines, and you put the coin in, and then you put the soap in, and then you put your clothes in, and then it washes the clothes. So where that shop is called a laundrama. Do they still call it that? Laundrette. No. Laundrette. Now, <coughs> some demon went and changed it to laundrette. They used to be called a, one name for it, laundrama. Sinarama. Rama, Rama, Rama. <laughs> now, they're not thinking of Rama, the Supreme Lord, but the name Rama comes. Or it may be to indicate someone else. Here we have Narasimha. Who is Narasimha? Who is Narasimha? Go back in time, how long? 25 years? And all over the world, the name Narasimha is famous. You know that? The name Narasimha is famous all over the world. The name Modi is famous all over the world, right? You all heard of the name Modi? Modi, Modi. Modi? You all heard the name Modi? Blank look. Prime Minister of India. Certainly, it's, it would be hard to find anyone in India over the age of six or seven years who hasn't heard the name of Modi. He's an important figure in the world. But about, I, how long, 25 years ago, the Prime Minister of India was <coughs> P.V. Narasimha Rao. So his name would come in the newspapers. Narasimha. So people say, Narasimha, welcome to our country, Mr. Narasimha Rao. They had no people, they had no idea outside of India that Narasimha refers to the Supreme. They were chanting his, the name of Narasimha. That counts. Krishna counts. Hey, so that's why it's a good idea to give the children names of Krishna so that directly or indirectly they'll be, they'll be chanting the name, they'll hear the name, others will call their name. So even in joke, if we say it's a joke, it may be when we're on Harinam Sankita. It doesn't happen so much. It used to happen a lot in the past. People would say, ha 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 ha, Hare Krishna. <laughs> in, uh, in America, a big festival is Halloween. When people dress in fancy dress, they dress as, they look like monsters or, or uh, Hare Krishnas. Some people might dress as Hare Krishna and pretend, and then they chant in the streets, imitating as a joke but they get the same benefit or they get the, they get freed from from uh, sinful reaction musical entertainment we don't recommend chant Hare Krishna as a musical entertainment but even if you do do it like that you won't get you won't get prema bhakti by if we're thinking we'll do it as a musical entertainment but one who does it even as a musical entertainment, they, they won't get praying bhakti, but they may get free from <coughs> unlimited sinful reactions. <coughs> or even neglectfully. Just uh, even if we neglectfully chant our mind, not thinking still, we won't get love of Krishna. We'll get free from sinful reactions. So it's it's always auspicious. But the real auspiciousness is not simply to get free from sinful reactions, but to be situated in pure love of Krishna. <clears throat> so even the point, even if we don't mean to praise him, we, we, don't, we don't really have any idea of what we're doing. But he's so kind. Uh, he's so kind that he accepts it. Oh, he's chanting my name. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, just like... Uh, if we if we we're just walking and some people are standing at the side and we hear they're saying our name they say they're talking about me oh what are they saying we become very interested is it not if we hear something what are they got to say oh yeah oh 
someone's discussing about me. You see these emails about me. Oh, what are they going to say? They may be, they may be blaspheming or criticizing you, but we become interested. If they're, if they're criticizing someone else, we may not be so interested, but they're criticizing us. Oh, what, what are they saying? Oh, I, I saw some email in which they were criticizing. Oh, right, right. You become very interested. So even Krishna becomes interested, that even if someone's blaspheming, you know, what are they going to say? <laughs> and want to speak of prayers that are offered with faith and submission, uh, even without full knowledge, just we see Muslims, there are many who actually follow five times a day or three times a day if they're Shia Muslims. They, they bow down and pray to Allah. Allah. Uh, <clears throat> so it's not going to go in vain. There is Allah. We don't call him Allah usually. We call him Krishna. But those prayers are offered. There, there's some, we can't say it's just some mechanical formality that they're doing. It may be in some cases, but even then they're doing it. As a child, uh, I, uh, my mother, she used to make us all sit down and say this, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. I don't even remember it. We had to say on the rosary all together. I don't, I don't remember the prayer. I didn't like to do it. I thought, what, what a waste of time. But anyway, I had to do it. I thought I had more, more important things to do, like playing football. But uh, she forced us, and she, she was... She was really into it. She was a really, really uh, devout Catholic. So she really believed in God and Mary and all this. So some, you can't say that there's nothing there. Krishna is pleased. He may not, may not be so pleased as with the pure devotees who are in full knowledge of him, but he accepts prayers to, to the degree of the sincerity with which they're offered. They don't go unacknowledged. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a common thing we find in Christianity. You know, they say prayers, the power of prayer, prayers do not go unnoticed. And it's, many people experience that in, in Christian, Hindu, whatever they may. You pray, you get you God reciprocates. They may have materialistic prayers. So uh, even even without full knowledge, and even if the system of religion, like Christianity and Islam, it's it's mixed with the mode of ignorance, strong admixture of the mode of ignorance, in as much as killing animals, they celebrate their festivals by uh, killing animals, especially in Islam, but. Some approach to God is there. Srila Prabhupada always said they're better than atheists. They're much better situated because there's some beginning. Still, we have many things to teach them. Who is God? How we should serve Him. Without any personal desire. We have many things. But uh, we find in the, in the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, the first commandment that God gave to the Israelites, to love God with all your heart. It's a call to pure devotional service. You may not understand that, but to love Him with all your heart is actually a call to pure devotional service. And uh, all one's heart means to have no other desire. If it's all your heart, then there's nothing left. It's all for Him. So it's actually a very good instruction. How to fulfill that, they can learn. But we find there are so many, uh, so much inspiration in God-given, how God-given inspiration. It's like, I was just discussing this, I have said many times, I, I only visited Italy, I think, two or three times, but the whole country is a, a architecture, architectural marvel that Every village of beautiful churches, inspired by God. It's inspired for the glory of God. 
There's one uh, American Catholic theologian. I don't remember his name now. He's a Dutch name, but I don't remember it now. He's very old. Maybe he died now. So he, he was raised as a... Uh, not Baptist, some, some Protestant denomination, which is very anti-Catholic. That's what Protestants meant. They protested against the Catholic Church. They had reason to protest, no doubt, at the time. So he always heard how bad the Catholics are. And then he, uh, he visited, as a young man, he visited for the first time in his life a Catholic cathedral in New York City. Maybe that's St. Patrick's Cathedral. And he was overwhelmed by the beauty. And he thought, this must be inspired by God. They've got something here that we don't have in our Protestantism. And then he became a Catholic. And he became one of the greatest uh, theologians, Catholic theologians of the modern age. I should have researched him on God his name. But anyway, you get the point. <clears throat> Even the very word him, if you think of the word him, H-Y-M-N. You must have the same word in your language, is it? Yes. Him, something like that. The very word has connotations of offering prayers to God with great respect, reverence, profundity, reflecting on the greatness of God. And there are comp compositions by great composers, Johann Sebastian Bach, Handel, they, they, they composed works, musical works of art in praise of God. Paintings, there's a famous painting by one of the Iskon artists of Mother Yashoda holding Krishna, like right, baby Krishna. It's modeled on the famous Madonna and Child theme, which is, is painted dozens of, I think the most famous one is by Raphael, I think. But there have been dozens of, it's a, a recurrent theme in Western art, before the age of secularism. And then later on you get Picasso, and there's a lot of difference between the, the beautiful works of art praising Jesus and this desperate madness of Picasso and Van Gogh and just a lot of difference. One is devotional, the other is mundane and one raises the spirit and the other degrade, degrades his Picasso. Picasso's art is an expression of his jumbled and jumbled mind and very low consciousness. They say, express yourself. In such a case, better don't, don't express yourself. <laughs> better to glorify God. Instead of expressing myself, my ego. Modern art means you, you, you put your ego on a canvas. Or not just on a canvas. Uh, I'll tell you, I, I'm telling so many anecdotes from my own life. So one time, driving in Philadelphia, state capital of Pennsylvania in the United States, a major city in the United States. So we're driving through a good area, that means all the buildings are neat and clean. And it's another building and there's a lawn, and there's a whole bunch of garbage on the lawn. I thought, how is that all of a sudden? I thought, how did they allow that? And I saw the sign, Museum of Modern Art. <laughs> it just looked like a bunch of scrap of being, but that's modern art. So this art, the, the, previously all the art, music, everything was for the glorification of God. And it might have been a little gross also, because a lot of it was with the, the angels with their swords and this and that. And it was for glorification of God. So something, you can't, if something meaningful, meaningful is there, no doubt. Srila Prabhupada brought 
real knowledge of God to the West for the first time, so that people can actually learn to glorify God in the best way. I, I heard one man who was speaking that he joined the choir singing hymns. Now, he didn't believe in God, but he just he thought the music was nice and gave him good feeling. So that's, he's also, but he, in, in the choir, means you have to praise God, right? So, even though he doesn't believe in God, he's praising God, at least verbally. Uh, professional kirtaniyas in Bengal, they're all, they, they, they all, they're not atheists. They're, they're professional kirtaniyas. They make a living by singing in an in a artistic, stylized way. It's not good because one should praise Krishna simply to praise him. But still, it's better than singing some... Because the, the very form is praise of Krishna, even if it's not properly done, it's still much better than some egoistic kind of art which has no connection with anything, with reality. And, and the uh, music, uh, since the uh, since the Second World War, the, the the music has just become more and more and more and more degraded. Tamago, all everything that goes on the name of art. Otherwise, everything, all art. That's the. It's supposed to be the expression of the human spirit. It's meant for glorifying him, not for anything else. And when that's done, he's pleased. <clears throat> One commentator on, the, on this name, Stavapriya, says that he becomes pleased. He likes the people are praising his qualities, but the main thing is please. I already made this point. <coughs> They're putting the jivas who have been misusing their senses since time immemorial are now properly utilizing their senses for praise of So like I was talking about art. So there's visual art, paintings, sculpture, architecture that can all be used to praise him. Or it can be used for something completely useless. <coughs> Just sense gratification. Just like the cinema, or so many YouTube videos, entertainment. It's just for indulging our senses. But actually the senses should be engaged in the service of the master of the senses. So visual art, uh, audio art, that we, by, by hearing, hearing his glories, spoken, sung, uh, art in the form of food, make very nice food to offer to Krishna. It's also important not just to taste nice, to make it look nice also. You put on the plate for Krishna, you don't just throw everything here and there. Arrange it very nicely. So everything done for his pleasure. And when that tendency is perfect, that everything we do, all our thoughts, our actions, our deeds, our intentions, our ambitions, our desires, are only for his praise, then that is the perfection. He becomes very happy. And we be, he becomes pleased, and we become pleased. Yasmin tush jagat tush. By his pleasure, the whole world can become satisfied. But he likes to, that, to do, that he will become completely immersed. He likes to be praised. Not just a little. He wants us to give our. He wants to us to completely dedicate ourselves to praise him at every moment. He likes <coughs> the devotees to chant and sing, raise their hands in worship of him, in kirtan. But that mood, the, the more there is actual love, surrender, the more he becomes pleased. And the result of that is that when he is pleased, then when he is pleased with us, then we become free from all lower desires, from 
the lower modes of nature, from anger, from envy, from hatred. Uh, uh, we become purified by glorifying Him. We become Ivan Prasanamanaso, Bhagavan Bhakti Yogata. We become very pleased in the mind by yoga. By yoga means to link with Him in devotion. Mm. Uh. So, of course, real and perfect praise is by real and perfect devotee, but there's a beginning. And we go further and further and further. We can praise Him more and more and more with more and more depth and feeling. Mm. And uh, if we, the more we praise him, then the more we lose the tendency to praise him. <coughs> to praise anything except him. Daladevidya Bhushan, in his commentary on this thing, uh, says he becomes greatly pleased when devotees sincerely describe his glories and chant his holy names. So, uh, some quotes in this regard. <coughs> Uh, from Srimad Bhagavatam, a verse which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stated that his guru taught him, and it's the essence of all uh, spiritual instructions. Evam Vrata Sapriya Nama Kirtya Jatanu Rago Dutta Chitta Uchai Hasatyato Rodhiti Rauti Gayatyun Madhava Nrittiti Lokabhaya by chanting the holy name of the Supreme Lord, one comes to the stage of love of Godhead. Then the devotee is fixed in his vow as an eternal servant of the Lord, and he gradually becomes very much attached to a particular name and form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As his heart melts with ecstatic love, he laughs very loudly or cries or shouts. Sometimes he sings and dances like a madman for he is indifferent to public opinion. So when one becomes completely absorbed in praising Krishna, then he, he forgets everything else. He doesn't care about praising anything else in this world. He doesn't care about being anti-praised or defamed by others for being so much... Of, he's so much absorbed in, in praising Krishna that Common people think he's a madman and insult, but he doesn't care. <clears throat> Gurudev Kobe Tava Karuna Prakash. There's a song about your taco which begins uh, Gurudev, when will you show? When will your mercy be manifest upon me? So he goes through so many things. And the, at the end of the song, he says, Vishoyi uh, Amare Padala Balaya. That the greatest manifestation of your mercy is when common people call me a madman. Uh, 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 the, the materialistic people, they, they call me a madman and throw dirt at me. <laughs> Great. Now, now I got the mercy of my Lord. That's it. So, from uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Priya jodi mana kore kore bharchana Veda shruti hoite hare she maraman Krishna speaking If my beloved consort female approaches me in a sulky mood kore uh, bharchana if it rebukes me that steals my mind from the reverent hymns of the Vedas So Krishna's being praised by the hymns of the Vedas and in the meantime his wife is Ah, oh, you don't love me! <laughs> oh! He likes that much. We can imagine by way of analogy a king is sitting being praised and all people are praised and he's used to that and he's good. He likes it. Good. They're praising me. In the meantime his wife comes and says, You're always sitting here. You don't give me enough time. Oh! becomes concerned. She's insulting him, but he becomes more concerned with that than with the people who are praising him. In the purport of this verse, Srila Prabhupada writes, 
Regulated principles in devotional service are meant for those who have not invoked their natural love of Godhead. When natural love arises, all regulated methods are surpassed and pure love is exhibited between the Lord and the devotee. Although on such a platform of love, the devotee sometimes appears to predominate over the Lord or transgress regulated principles. Such dealings are far more advanced than ordinary dealings through regulated principles with awe and veneration. A devotee who is actually free from all designations due to complete attachment in love for the Supreme exhibits spontaneous love for Godhead which is always superior to the devotion of regulated principles. Hare Krishna. So that's name 685, Stava Kriya. Any question about all this? Thank you for the lecture. Uh, you Thank you for the lecture. It became a ritual to say that. It's nice, but... It's part of, actually, here, you know, we're in the I appreciate world. it. It's part of the Western, you have to say thank you all the time. In Vedic culture, you don't say please, thank you. It's understood. Okay, next time, I'll get it out. Yeah. My question is, you spoke about this Kirtanias in Bengali. This professional Bengal Kirtanias in Bengal and now all over the world. Professional yes. Kirtanias. And you said it's better that they glorify Krishna without earn money. And... We have in our movement some kirtanias. We have professional kirtanias. They are, and also yeah. some book distributors. They are maintain their family. They maintain some people maintain their family by book distribution. Shri Prabhupada specifically authorized them. Yes. And um, distributing books to maintain your family is glorious. It's a glorious way to maintain your family because you could sell other things which are much easier to sell and make money much more easily. So if you distribute books, that means you're serving the mission. It's not easy to sell books. It's easier to sell uh, I don't know, apple pies or probably anything except Prabhupada's books. It's easier to sell uh, manure than sell Prabhupada's. But in this area, manure, you know, that, that's, uh, that's uh, for fertilizing. That's the... Uh, all you know, the chicken manure, the chicken S H I T. What do you call that? What's the good word for that? Chicken dropping. Yeah, you can sell it here in this area to the farmers. Farmers always want manure, so you could sell stool. Probably he's in selling broccoli. <laughs> so so anyway. Even if someone does with a pecuniary pecuniary motive, they want money. Still, they're getting the books out. It's valuable. But uh, it, it, it's definitely better to chant Hare Krishna even with some mundane motive than to chant something completely bogus and mundane. But on the other hand, that chanting for money is much condemned. It's another perspective, right? You know, the, was it half empty, half full, and all this kind of thing. So, another perspective is that you can do the same thing with a different attitude, and you can get love of Krishna, and all you're getting is some money. What a foolish thing to do! If you can get pure love of Krishna, and all you're getting is some some pennies, that's foolish. So from one perspective, yeah, it's great, it's much better than other things. From another perspective, it's stupid and offensive. Yeah. Yeah. When you said Krishna is Bhavagrahi, and when it comes to Hare Krishna Mahamantra, some people say Ramo, Ramo. Some people say Ramo, Ramo. Well, I heard... Uh, Bengalis say Ramo, Ramo. I heard... Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, 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 Hare, Hare. And there, yeah, there's one different, what's his name? Palaka. My mom called brother Palaka. Very strong on the point. Why are you saying Rama? It should be Rama. Actually, according to Sanskrit, it should be Rama. And apparently, although there's no uh, 
hard or solid record of it. Srila Prabhupada is very much against the sure. chanting of Rama by non Bengalis. You can't fault Bengalis for that. Uh, if it's done in imitatively of Bengali Kirtanias, then what's the point? Srila Prabhupada was, to superficial appearances of Bengali, but he didn't chant Rama, he chanted Rama. But again, I, I, if we're doing anything done superficially, is obviously it's not the real thing. So if we're superficially imitating Bengali, why? Why should we do that? That's not the point. On the other hand, somehow or other, if they're chanting. Again, it's two perspectives. So, Hare Krishna. One more question. Uh, something not very good, but in previous um, uh, name that we, you were explaining, you say Rama names um, uh, and nursing. That block my like that block an idea in my mind. We fast on their appearances there, but we don't do anything on the Parshuram's appearance there. We don't do anything on Parashuram appearance there. Or Buddha. Buddhists do. It's a big difference. Buddhist Vizak, they call that the Buddha Buddha Purnima. Comes the day after the Shinga Chaturvashi. Didn't come this year, exactly, because there was no Purnima. No exact pranima this year. So that's the day of his birth, his enlightenment, and his passing away. Happened on the same titi. Uh, so we don't celebrate that. Buddhists celebrate it. Well, let's have a look. There's Matsya. What do we do? Kurma, do we celebrate? Maybe at Sri Kakulam. There's this Kurma temple there in South India. Uh, Varaha Dvadashi, we observe. Narasimha is number four. Number five is Bhamana, we celebrate. <coughs> number six is Rama. No, number six is Parashuram. Parashuram. Number six is Parashuram. Parashuram. Maybe there are Parashuram temples in Kerala. Maybe they celebrate something. The number seven is Rama. Eight is Balaram. Nine is Buddha. And ten is Kalki. So some we celebrate, others we don't. We don't even know the, the appearance day of. Of, of uh, Matsya. Maybe someone. Knows. There are not many temples either. Some avatars are worship more than others. We celebrate the appearance of all these avatars every day by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ete Tamsha Kalapumsa. Krishna's two Bhagavan's. Krishna, all the avatars are there. Krishna. So when we praise Krishna, we're praising all of the avatars. Also. But we can also meditate this. The, 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 the Dashavatar Stotram is that praising the Ten avatars so that we can do. We can sing that. Hare Krishna. So that's the last session of this Shravan Ketan camp. And it will go on. Shravan Ketan will never end. Until our